Today we celebrate the Feast of Pentecost, the descent of the Holy Spirit upon each and every single one of us. And 2,000 years ago, the apostles gathered in an upper room. And all of a sudden, in some way, shape, or form, their lives were changed and transformed. The third person of the Trinity came upon them. And what happened? Tongues of fire came upon them, and they were able to speak in their native tongue. Why did this happen? How did this happen? Jesus bestowed the Holy Spirit upon those apostles, and they went out, and they brought the Spirit of God to each and every single person whom they encountered. But what I find fascinating with that experience, with that encounter, everyone seemed confused. People were speaking in their native tongue. People were speaking languages that they had never heard before. And confusion happened. But from the midst of the confusion, the presence of Christ was very much alive. To this very day, each and every single one of us, as disciples and witnesses of Jesus, has been given the power of the Holy Spirit on the very day of our baptism, we are given that gift, a gift that must remain alive for all the world to see. As disciples of the risen Lord, we are sealed with the Holy Spirit on the moment and the day of our confirmation. The bishop or priest says to us at that very moment, be sealed with the Holy Spirit Peace be with you. My sisters and brothers, we must allow the Spirit of God that dwells within us to shine forth so brightly that all the world can see it. For these last seven weeks of Easter, we have basked in the glory and salvation that Jesus has given to us by virtue of his resurrection. Over these last seven weeks, we have heard from the Acts of the Apostles in which Jesus gives that mandate to go out and to preach to all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. We hear in today's second reading from St. Paul's letter to the Corinthians that no one can profess Jesus as Lord except by the Holy Spirit. As human beings, we are unique. And we have unique gifts and special gifts. That all comes from the Holy Spirit. And St. Paul tells us that today there are different forms of service, but the same Lord. There are different workings, but the same God. All in which produces the same end result building up God's kingdom. My sisters and brothers, each and every single one of us are called to build up the kingdom of God right here and right now. As baptized members of the church, we are one body. We must allow the Holy Spirit to, dr to drive us to encourage us, to strengthen us, and to empower us. Even in the midst of trials and tribulations, we must allow the Holy Spirit to be with us and to never lose sight. We are living in uncertain times. We've heard it over and over again since the beginning of this pandemic. We don't know when we'll be able to gather as a community again. We don't know when, we'll be, when we will be able to go back to what normal was. And what normal was just nine weeks ago will never be normal again, nor should it be. But we hold on to what we have and to the gift that Jesus has given to us. 
the gift of the Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your Spirit, and they shall be created, and you shall renew the face of the earth. To say that the recent events occurring throughout our cities of our country is disheartening would be an understatement. What we have witnessed with our own eyes, what we are living through at this time, would be described by the human eye in one simple word. Horrific. On May 25th, 2020, the world watched yet again an African-American man be brutally killed by a white police officer in the city of Minneapolis. Many of us have cringed at the video of this man, this police officer, who pledged to protect the people of the city of Minneapolis, murder an unarmed, defenseless, African-American man by brutally slamming his knee on his neck. Not only do we see with our eyes the horrific nature of what is happening, we hear with our ears this man cry out, I can't breathe. For eight minutes, this officer, who is supposed to protect the people of his city, actually murders one of them for all the world to see and hear. This is certainly not the first time that this has happened on American soil. We recall the lives of so many black Americans taken by the hands of those who are supposed to protect citizens of their cities. We look back to the pages of American history when people of color were discriminated against and looked at as less than. We hear elected officials come before the platform time and time again and say to us, we hear you and change will come. We as people of color must boldly say, no. Just see and hear the tape of May 25th, 2020. We will instill the change. Two words can sum up our response to the horrific events of May 25th, 2020. No more. No more will we sit by and witness the murder of yet another African American by the hands of a white racist law enforcement officer. No more will we stand by and hear the cries for justice and equality from black and brown people in our cities and nothing gets done. No more will we as a community watch brothers and sisters be torn apart by racist acts of violence and oppression. We must no longer tolerate the bigotry and discrimination that people of color go through on a regular basis. No more. As Catholics, we must first and foremost turn to Christ Jesus, our Savior and King. Today is Pentecost. Our Lord tells us in today's Gospel, 
Peace be with you. We are not living in peaceful times, unfortunately. In making our voices heard, we must do so peacefully, always holding on to the words of Christ Jesus. Just as the Holy Spirit descended upon the apostles on that very first Pentecost, the spirit of truth lies within each one of us. We must proclaim the truth that we as a community will no longer watch and hear another person of color die by the hands of a racist. As pastor of this beautiful parish here at St. Mark the Forest, as diocesan director of ministry of African American Catholics and, by, and vicar for the Vicarity for Black Catholic Concerns, I stand in passionate support of communities that are outraged. Too many communities around this country feel their voices are not being heard. Their complaints about racist treatment are unheeded. And we are not doing enough to point out the deadly sin of racism. Yes, the deadly sin of racism. We pray today that there will be many voices speaking out peacefully against this horrific sin. All of us seeking healing, peace, and justice. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your spirit, and they shall be created. And you, you, O Holy Spirit, will renew the face of this earth.